order today, February 3rd, 2021. And it looks like Commissioner Hatfield will give the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance is gonna be pitch hit by deputy. <laughs> is that okay, Dale? Yep. All right. That's good. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day and for the opportunity which you have to be here and to be able to, to live in this county and in this land. Father, please bless us this day that we might be able to do the work that needs to be done and represent the people of the county and do the things which would be best for, for them and also for the future. Father, we're grateful for the many good men and women who serve here in this county and our emergency services and sheriff's department. Please guard and protect them and help them stay out of harm's way. Father, please bless our military throughout the world that they be protected and be able to represent our, our interests. And Father, we're grateful for the opportunity which we, we have to live in this day and time. And please help us that we can be equal to the task that is before us and we might be able to, to do well. We are grateful for one another and for the communities that we share and enjoy. And please bless us this day in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand and repeat the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for that, you guys. It's okay, we'll wait for you. Just take your time. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Let the record show who said that. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, agenda review, supporting documents. It looks like 517. Trevor, you're gonna need a couple more minutes than one, two. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll accommodate. And then, uh, anything else? Follow up? Yes? No, I won't. Yeah, we can do the minutes, both sets. I'd entertain okay. a motion. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes from January 6th and January 20th. I'll second that. I've got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, former agenda items. Um, yeah, we need to address, apparently after speaking with our treasurer and then with our auditor, um, on the 16th of December, we had decided to have uh, Kay and Margaret Smith pay 300 on their taxes because of the uh, home being evaluated as a secondary residence rather than a primary, and there was an extra fee. Uh, we went ahead and and reversed that. They were going to cover a third, and we were going to cover the two thirds amount. But because of the way things are set up, uh, when the system processes that and it goes back to a primary residence, it refunds the full amount. So we are going to go ahead and just forego and refund the full amount to the to the Smiths rather than try and <coughs> figure that out. out so. Okay. We just want to make sure we had that in the minutes, Marna. So. You want to make a motion to that? I don't think we need to. We're just following up with what happened. Well, we did We did make a motion to the other, so I'm wondering okay. if we need to. It's up to you. Make a motion. <laughs> Whatever would be cleaner for you. So, so I, I would make a motion that we approve the full refund of the Smiths. I'll second that. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Is there anything else in former agenda items? Not that I have. Okay. Um, I don't see Corey or Mark for emergency management issues. Do you want to cover some COVID? Yeah, I think we've got uh, a little bit of good news here. Um, our cases have stayed about the same, uh, new cases, but our um, seven day average is actually going down and active cases is going down as well. 
Um, so, you know, more and more people are, uh, are recovering. Uh, the vaccine is getting out. Um, we've had a, a number of clinics and there's uh, more schedule. And uh, a number of people uh, started to receive their uh, second dose uh, just this last week. So uh, we're optimistic that that will be out and hopefully to the other uh, general public that would like to receive that, I would say by the latest June. Uh, we're hoping uh, earlier than that, but uh, as, as they become available. So uh, from time to time, there are doses that um, they're not extras, but they're ones that have been reserved and somebody may not uh, show up. And so if you do want to get on a, a waiting list and you happen to be in that demographic or close, you can get on that and then the other health department would call you. You might not get a lot of notice, but you have a chance to get it a little bit earlier. But uh, Things are looking better, so. Janica, did you want to come bring that up? Sure. I think that's would be a good time. <clears throat> it was brought to our attention that the second shot is basically kicking some people's, <laughs> yeah. you know what, and so we'd like to see if we, do you want to just sure. kind of go through that real quick? Um, so some of our public safety employees have started receiving their second dose of the vaccine, and they are seeing some side effects. Um, about half of the people are. Um, I've received a few calls asking if we can use the emergency paid sick leave that COVID authorized um, to cover those days when they are sick. It looks like they're average, averaging between 24 and 36 hours with symptoms from that shot. Um, they're getting severe headaches, muscle aches, some nausea, um, fever, fever blisters, things like that. So. Um, if you could give me direction on letting the department heads know what to do, I would really appreciate it. Have we checked to, to see? I mean, that's kind of foreign territory. I don't know if that's a, a permissible use. That would be the only hesitancy I would have. I mean, so, I've talked to a lot of people that have had it on the second dose, and it's, it's exactly what you talked about. Yeah, so the law doesn't specify. I did call a couple other agencies to see what they're doing, and they're allowing it. Um, okay where we're not taking a tax credit anyway, I don't know that it would really cause us a problem. Just tell them to get it on Friday. Right, I actually did tell a couple of people that, whether I should have or not. <laughs> if you don't wanna miss work, get it on Friday. Okay. Yeah. So. All right, I think we're okay. I don't know, do you wanna make a motion to that? Or I would make you... a motion that we uh, authorize that if uh, somebody experiences an adverse uh, reaction, reaction to the uh, COVID vaccine. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'll send Thank something you. out. Okay. Okay. You got anything else? I don't. You got anything else? Full sessions in bloom. Lots and lots of bills. Lots and lots of bills. So, okay. It's uh, 505. So, Yvette Gallegos, would you like to come up and pull that mic towards you? And State your name and where you're from and let us know what you're here for. My name's Yvette Glegos and I live in Willard for 24 years. Okay. And you're looking for? Um, they doubled my taxes. Okay. And you're gonna have to bring that up so we can get you on the minute. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Talking. I know you're short, but it's okay. <laughs> Um, they doubled my taxes, and I called up and said why they did it. Is they said they sent some notice. I never got notice about me living there to fill the, I guess, some information out. I don't know what information they sent. Okay. So they think I don't live there because I did have, I changed my address to an Ogden address because I was having an um, issue with my ex taking my mail. So um, I did change it for a year, but that was like so you were still ago. you were still living there, but your mail was yeah. being someplace else. Yeah. Okay. Have you got that pulled up? It's right here. So I'm assuming that the reason that the tax is, you know, in essence, almost doubled is because the uh, primary residence exemption uh, wasn't allowed because uh, they thought that it was uh, a second home. 
I think yeah, I've been there <clears throat> since since uh, twenty four years. And so then, house. then you probably did you get the things that they sent out asking you because there should have been three. Uh, my property tax either. I just go online and pay it. They did, they didn't go to your Ogden address. Um, I don't live there, and I don't know who lives there now, so I don't know. Okay. So I'm just wondering if that's what happened. Is that they sent out kind of like the Logan one? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. The only concern that I have on this is. If, if we do the exact same thing that we did last time, it's in essence going to be forgiving the entire tax unless there's some way to uh, to prorate it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because that's what we did uh, last time. Well, with the tax, but once it goes back to a primary, it would still have it should be the primary, primary tax residence. on there. Right, but... So just the difference... But that's what we did with the uh, the Smiths, and it uh, sent well, the entire amount back. It was more than a third, though, remember? I don't think we sent it back to their primary. Yeah. So did they send you the liquid notice at all? I didn't receive anything from... So how, how did you know? You just we got, just go online and pay it. So you got this online when you went to get online? Uh -huh, and it said, like, over twice than what I paid for last year okay so did you call anybody besides just us no to get i on? just called and they just told me to make an appointment with you guys so okay um is it something that we ought to have it looks on? like that's what i'm just going to say did you already pay it yeah i had to i didn't okay. want you guys to make me pay late fee <laughs> Yeah, it, <laughs> that was bad <laughs> enough in what I had to pay. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I mean, from the so, documentation I hear, that I see here, it looks yeah, like it was paid, paid That's what I was just in December. Yeah. At it. So then it would actually be identical to that other incident. But Like I say, and that's the only hesitation that I have is if you do that and it goes through the same system, you're refunding everything. Right. No, you're only refunding you're only refunding the primary difference, the difference between the primary and the secondary. Well, I think that's, that's what all they, Sean did. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. So, so that was a full amount. That's what I was saying. I thought it was a full amount. Yeah. So it would just take away the secondary charge. So gotcha. I honestly think it's the same. So same I, thing. Yeah. I. Uh, Another one of those things from the legislature that hasn't been really good. Well, uh, I'd make a motion that we. Do you? Oh, sorry. Do you have your address changed? Is it correct with the uh, treasurer's I office so now? I because when I found this out, I asked them if they did change it, and they did. Well, they told okay. me they did. So okay. Hopefully. Okay. All right. Okay, I'd, I'd make a motion that we uh, have this change to a primary residence uh, from secondary to primary uh, to be able to reverse the extra charges. I would second that. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, you want to follow up with Sean? Yeah, if you want to follow up with Sean office. at the Treasurer's office probably tomorrow. Okay. He's yeah. up here now. Just down here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just on the second floor right outside this door okay. when you turn right. Go to the back. So. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank Sorry you. about that. And then, oh, yeah. But don't feel bad. I mean, it's like the third one we've had. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So, thank you. Okay. Thanks for bringing us close. Thanks. 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 And Gloria and Gabe live. I'm going to. Sorry. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt that one. Leva. One of these two guys Leva. can. Leva. Leva. There you go. State your name and tell us what you're here for. Uh, Gabe Leva. Okay. I'm here for um, helping out my grandmother, Gloria Leva. Uh, I was told uh, last month by my father, uh, who lives in California, um, he filled out an application to get my, uh, my grandmother's uh, property tax uh, a refund or a reduction. Okay. Um, so doing that uh, last month, getting all the information, what you guys needed for her, uh, her income st statements, so forth. So even though I didn't know until I read the application, the application was due back in September, I believe. Oh, for so the, for the abatement. I guess it was like an emergency situation. Abatement. Yeah, trying to help her out in a way. 
with her being on a fixed income. Yeah. I'm just looking at the dates while these two are looking at the dates. Yeah, there's a lot of information here. <laughs> <laughs> right. So did they pay the taxes? Yes, my grandma, they, yeah, she did ended up paying the taxes in November, I believe. Okay, so they're just looking for the credit L to go like back. Like credit back, yes. And ironically, that's the only information that I don't have. It's not included in here. Like what the difference is? Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, everything that's in here is um, income related. There's uh, nothing that uh, shows the actual uh, tax amount. Do you want to roll that forward to the next meeting or just instruct? I hate, I hate to table it, but I'd, yeah, I'd like to have the accurate information so we can. Yeah, the yeah, I mean, there's some there's some great documentation in here on um, income, assets. I mean, everything that you know is required there. Yes. But I don't see anything on the actual uh, taxable amount, the tax notice, how much was paid, um, okay. the available abatement, and okay. so that would be the only problem. Right. Um, so she would, I would have to uh, get that copy. Well, I think we could probably get that information. Yeah, I think we could, uh, you know, just get it from uh, from the treasurer's office. Treasurer's office. Okay. We would just uh, we need to have that supporting information to uh, to see where things stand. Okay. So. Um, so like I said, I'd hate to table it too, but if you've waited since November, can you wait another couple of weeks? Yeah, that's fine. I can okay. Come, yeah, I can come back. Yeah, our next meeting would be on the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same time. No. Uh, we're no, in the morning. Yeah, we're in the morning. Oh, Thursday morning. Yeah, morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thursday. yeah, that's no problem. I can okay. Do that. Okay. Maybe I'll learn your name by then. Oh, okay. <laughs> no right. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> These guys have it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So I entertain a motion to table this till. I make a motion to table this till the next commission meeting. I'll second that. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield, a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks okay. for bringing it to Thank us. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Gabe. Heather. Hi. Um, so we have one of our board members, Tora Bruff. She is moving. She's from Manaway. And so we want to replace her with Greg, Greg Young from Perry. Tora Bruff. And Greg's willing to serve? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Very good. Yep. He's excited. I awesome. entertain a motion. I would make a motion that we appoint uh, Greg Young to the, uh, the library board. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. And then, do you guys send a letter out, or is there something that we can send out to Tora saying, hey, thank you, we're going to miss you, appreciate your service? Okay. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. That'll be good. Thank you. You're up, Trev. There's, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you got, you want to just unplug the one or? I don't know what's on that, but do you have a splitter? You just did. Oh. You just did. So you unplugged the right thing, whatever it was. Telling Keith that it was your doing. I had nothing to do with it. Marla, Marla touched the technology. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks. Something flashed. Oh, there you go. Awesome. So, um, the Fair River Town Company is looking at doing a large scale improvement project of either enclosing or mining um, its canal from its ownership near Cutler Dam down to the mouth. Marla, will you give him his, if he's going to talk, yeah, get the oh, yeah. alternate. If not, we can turn yours around. Can't we? Oh, it lit up. Sorry about that. I knew Keith just texted me when I said that and said can't hear him. So. Okay. 
Uh, sorry about that. Uh, this is Trevor Nelson, general manager of the Bear River Canal Company. Um, the canal company is looking at doing a large liner project in the canyon, the Cutler Canyon area. And we'll be lining the canal from our ownership, which is about one mile downstream from the dam, to the mouth of Cutler Canyon. Um, at which point we're going to be building a siphon across the river. Now this is all theoretical and we're just applying for the grant at this point. So we haven't gotten shareholder approval and this is just the very beginning. This is such a large scale project, you have to look at feasibility before you go too far. And that's the beauty of this project. It's an NRCS funding pool called PL566. And what this will allow us to do is to abandon the Hammond Canal at its most vulnerable locations. I'm sure that you're aware in the springtime we had a catastrophic failure. And um, because of the soil conditions on the Hammond side, the Hammond side is really not great for um, reliability um, because of slide issues. And so we feel like this is the best way to approach this. Now, we went ahead and applied for this this last summer, and we received word back that we had not been approved, um, but they had awarded us a different grant, a preliminary investigation grant to take our idea and expand upon it. They looked at the sub-basin, because this is watershed development, <coughs> and they looked at the sub-basin and they decided that there was more projects and more things to help the communities that should be thought about than just the canal lining. And so what they did is they gave us a $50,000 grant to go and explore um, additional partners um, that may have projects that are related to water in the greater area, plus this bigger project. They like our project, and the reason we hadn't taken on more partners is because the environmental process becomes quite a bit more complex when you push about $25 million yeah. of federal funds. And so <clears throat> we, um, they kind of instructed us that they anticipated we would go above that and we would do the more intense environmental process, but they wanted us to have more partners. So one of the potential partners that we see is the county. And these are some of the potential areas. So the big one that we see for the county is um, flood prevention and recreation. Um, you can see that um, there's quite a bit of assistance for the engineering side of things and then with the construction on flood prevention, which is what this program was originally designed for, it's 100% paid by the NRCS program. And we know that you guys have managed, you have areas where you have flood concerns and that may could be tied into the canal. And what I've come today to do is to seek permission to work with the county staff I'm looking to see if the county may have some projects that fit into this envelope um, of funding and to see if you would like to join us in this. Now, it's a long process. Um, we will finish this preliminary investigation by the end of the summer, and then um, if we're awarded funding and start into the next phase, which is engineering and environmental, that takes two years, and then after that's completed, you have a 10-year window to build your project. Um, and so we're talking 2023 at the earliest for implementation if you guys have a project that you would like to do. Um, one, of the, one of the unique things about this program is you can take it all the way to the end of the 30% design and um, environmental assessment before you have to kind of sign on the dotted line and say we're going to construct this. So you won't have to make a decision to if you want to construct this until 2023, 2024. But we see that this has potential um, benefits for the canal company as well as the county. And once you do hit the construction point, the concern that uh, uh, the county attorney had when I visited with him about this was if the county would be liable if one of the other partners, say like Fremont City or the canal company itself, decided not to build their portion or couldn't come up with funding after they had signed for the construction. And it was indicated to us that once you get to construction, each individual participating agency um, applies for that last phase independent of the others. So if Bear River Canal Company decides to hit it in 2023, they apply then. If you guys decide your section of your project you want to wait until 2025, you, you all start to 2025 in, uh, building them. And so you would there's no cross um, liability on the different projects. So I guess I would request the consideration to 
allowing you to work with some of the county staff and see if there's projects that we can have to coordinate on. Okay. Trevor presented this too in the soil conservation district meeting that we had, and, and that's I recommended that he actually come and present that to us here today so that we had that information. What kind of water savings is it going to be if it's basically tarped? Do you have that? Is, um, that, is that part of the process? Because I know that's... That's part of the process, and we're kind of tuning that in. We've got several things going right now to help us understand that better. Okay. This project, though, for the canyon is more about supply security. Right. Because if the canal, if the Bear Canal Company loses its canal, $60 million of crops die in the field. Right. And so we would like to avoid that, as I'm sure the rest of the county obviously does as well. You do lose some in the other groundwater on unlined, but the uh, real savings is when it's actually covered. Right. Then you don't lose it for the uh, evaporation and transpiration. Yeah. But uh, um, is there a max on the entities? I mean, obviously, this goes through a number of different municipalities. Um, I mean, this section is a little bit more specific. But, I mean, are you talking county? Could you have water conservancy involved? I mean... Yeah, the Water Conservancy has already come forward and indicated okay. that they would like to participate. Um, we were instructed to work with some of the environmental interests, so we're talking with the Bird Refuge and the Salt Creek uh, State uh, Bird Management right. Area. Um, and then... I also think uh, the Bear River Watershed is a part of that also. Yeah, because you can see environmental as an option, so we're contacting them as well as talking okay. to Pacific Corp with their... Activities. Right. We think there could be some cross coverage there. Um, so, hmm. for this first, for this next phase to get us through the preliminary investigation, we are going to kind of par down and pick out the best um, partners as far as their projects go to get us to the next stage. But at the next stage, we're allowed to bring in additional stakeholders. And if we're going to have to do the large EIS environmental assessment, our intention is to bring as much money to the county as the entities of the county as a whole want to put on the table. Um, and it can be quite significant. I mean, 75 million is not an unreasonable number that could come to the county through this program to build all kinds of things related to water. Interesting. I mean, under, understanding how the process works, I don't have any problem at least giving them access to oh, yeah. work with the county on this. No, I mean, the worst thing, in my opinion, that's going to happen is we find that there's no suitable projects. So, yeah. And I think between Rhodes and Scott and everybody, you know, we can have you take a look and see what you can do with Bill and Scott and, yeah. and go from there, honestly. Okay. Okay. And, um, and then our hope was to get with the county staff and come back at a later date before we submit that preliminary investigation. So That'd be great. Look at to report on the project. Yeah, it sounds great. Cool. Okay, great. All right. Thanks for your, for your time. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. I just got a text from IT and said he's going to slap me for doing that, so better get it back working. <laughs> as long as he slaps you. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Oh, it looks like uh, Utah's up. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> I haven't heard that acronym before. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We've already got her scared. <laughs> Just come up and state your name. And while you're Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you off. Shula, you're not coming up? I'm guessing it's the box. Do you want to tell everybody else who's, who's with you? I'm definitely going to do that. Thank okay, you. Okay, that'd be awesome. Um, well, thank you this evening. I'm Beth Holbrook, trustee for Utah Transit Authority, and I have here with me today Shul Bishop. He's our director of government affairs. He's back there hanging out with his uh, with his peeps. He's from here, of course. <laughs> and um, I also wanted to notice that uh, Karen Cronin is here. She is also the um, local advisory council uh, representative for this area. Okay. And then I have Laura Hansen here. She is our director of planning, and she's going to be... Um, helping me navigate through some of these slides to talk about some of the planning that she's uh, that her team is going to be looking at. Okay. Um, and so with that, I'd like to go ahead and start. Um, yeah, just make sure you bring that mic over so everybody can hear you. Is that okay? Okay. So next slide, please. There you go. So one of the things that we have really wanted to be focusing on, especially during these this five-year service plan that we're doing, is 
being as collaborative as possible. We want to be reaching out and talking to people, talking to uh, cities, talking to um, county commissioners, et cetera. And we want to make sure that our staff is actually meeting with um, your staff to understand where some of the development um, considerations are at, what your future plans are going to be, what type of um, planning is going to be going on in the, in the future as well. We also want to um, look at potential. Uh, last year, there was a study, or 2019, end of 2019, there was a study that was done on transportation. Those are the things we want to continue to work with you well on. And um, as, and I just want to say kudos to Commissioner uh, Summers, who requested, along with his uh, uh, colleagues, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Commissioner Hadfield, who requested that we take a look at one of our bus stops and, and make some changes because of the potential for some um, safety issues. And um, we did that, and uh, that was fabulous. Great, great find, and we're finding that it actually flows really well. So thank you for that. Um, we also are going to continue to do ongoing checks with everyone just to make sure that we are listening and hearing to what everything is going on. Next slide, please. Um, with this, I'm going to turn it over to Laura. She's going to take over this part of it. And Thank you so much, commissioners um, and trustee. So we are here to share with you our, uh, some information about our draft five-year service plan. Uh, this is just one step in our planning process at UTA. We start with the uh, working with the Wasatch Front Regional Council through the regional transportation planning process, looking out 30 years into the future. This five-year service plan is really a fiscally constrained um, snapshot in time of where we think we're headed as an agency in terms of our service changes themselves. But nothing in the plan is set in stone at this point. It's all just kind of a vision. Um, we have the operating um, operations planning piece where we go through public hearings, outreach to local governments, um, public engagement, um, to really refine the changes in this plan before they actually become implemented. Um, and then we do the, we implement things every three, uh, three times a year on our change days. If you could go to the next slide, please. So the five year service plan is organized around a series of guiding elements. And the first of which is system wide planning. Uh, for the first time, really, our local plans are really thinking about these county-to-county -county connections and mode-to-mode -mode connections. So how do we transfer from one thing to the next and really make this a seamless experience? And so uh, our planning has, has taken that into mind. Uh, a second element is the implementation of a core route network. These are a series of bus routes that are our very best bus routes. They start early in the morning, run late at night, 15 minutes or better, seven days a week. Uh, we don't have very many of them yet because of fiscal constraints, but it's something we see happening um, or growing over time. Uh, the third is all-day service. Throughout the pandemic, we've seen an interesting change in travel patterns, and we've seen this really steady demand for all-day service. So uh, people who work on, inter on shifts, for example, they don't have a traditional 9 to 5 job. And so this plan is infusing a lot more all-day service into our baseline network. Um, similar to that, we've expanded our hours on a number of routes throughout our whole system, running earlier and later in the day. So if you work from 5 in the morning to 1 p.m., for example, uh, we'll be able to take you where you need to go. We're thinking about some new ways um, to incorporate new technologies. We have a microtransit pilot in uh, south, uh, southwestern Salt Lake County. Right. We think there's a lot of potential for something like that to happen in other places. And so we're exploring um, that in, in the future. And then we're also planning for new projects, um, sort of laying the foundation for major capital projects that are on the way. Next slide, please. And I'm going to pass it back to our trustee. Are you still looking at uh, the autonomous? Yes. The pilot? Okay. It, that's interesting that you um, asked that question. We've had that question from several other communities as well to try to look at, at ways that they can do connectivity. So good question. Um, so I just wanted to focus specifically um, in this neck of the woods. Um, so here's the two routes, as you can see, the 630 and then the F638, and how those um, currently continue all day service on those. There won't be any immediate changes to those. Um, we're looking at... The future, though, as you can see, some of the modeling and the feasibility of some of those transit um, types, for instance, the microtransit could be something that could be um, implemented 
once every all the other options have been reviewed to see if this could be a better fit in some locations and or sometimes um, the connectivity pieces i just wanted to point out that we are working on a project with um, the ogden uh, weber state bus rapid transit project that is due to break ground um, in the next month or so and that project is going to be a connectivity piece from the front runner system to weber state and back and it actually goes through their campus and I don't know if you have a lot of Weber State potential students, but we do know that anytime we can get people to where they need to go, and it's a consistent and a frequent service, that changes everything. So for instance, their on-campus service is five minutes. So every five minutes, a shuttle will come. And then the service itself is every 10 minutes throughout the system. And although um, it's not yet connected to Box Elder by anything Front Runner, when we do implement the BRT, we're gonna, of course, look at the connectivity from the north to see how we can integrate that from the bus side to get to that either to the Front Runner system or some other element and that's one of the things that we're going to be taking a look at during this five-year service plan. And um, we are looking to improve all-day services in all of our um, bus areas in the Ogden area as well. Um, Pleasant View is not currently active as a front-runner station, but we are looking to increase that. And in order to do that, one of the best things to do is to start getting that bus service, get that interest back, make sure we understand who's going to be utilizing that for any future developments. Next slide, please. Um, I'm just going to reference again the transit study that I talked about. Oh, it is 2020. Sorry about that. I thought it was 2019. My goodness, the year just <laughs> compressed on me. Um, this actually had some um, real good insight in terms of the bus stops and um, what we can do to maybe integrate and, and enhance the service that we already have. And it actually identified 17 bus stops on Route 630. Some of them. Um, heading further south uh, to be upgraded um, as resources allow. And we also looked at a couple of stops that are going to be constructed, constructed even in 2021. So those are two things that are going to be occurring um, more, one more long term than the other. Next slide, please. Um, the park and ride lot, I wanted to kind of talk about and update everyone on that. The park and ride lot, um, we currently have um, a, an agreement with the, the Box Elder School District to use some of their parking that's over just on Main Street right before 11th South. That is going to be in place until we can um, finish developing our site, which we anticipate would be in 2027. Um, in, as part of our corridor preservation, we purchased about 10 acres just west of Walmart. And as you know, that Walmart um, it, at this point in, in this development, it is the last building on there. So anything further west, there's no infrastructure yet. So once a developer gets those roads built, then we can finish the building on that site and then establish a park and ride from there. And then in turn, long term, that could be either another station or a, a transit uh, service area. The WFRC actually is talking about having, um, there's going to be some type of an application, uh, a, a recommendation to do that in order to find funding to actually pay for the cost to develop that park and ride once the, it's connected to the Walmart itself. Um, it's, and as you can see, it's a CMAC grant that was um, applied for on that. So con con uh, congestion mitigation thank you. and air quality. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I turned to the expert right here. <laughs> um, I, Spit that right out I was like, what is the C? Oh my goodness, I just had a mind blank on that one It's coming from chairing Transcom for the last two years. Yes, exactly. Next slide, please. Um, and then I wanted to talk about corridor preservation. Um, some of the future transit uh, purchases that we have made and extending from the 12th Street in Ogden to Brigham City. And just as a note, um, just earlier this week, I was at the Weber County Commission and they approved the um, the purchase of right away to their BDO site, so their business development area. And that is at, at roughly at the 12th Street location. So that is already underway to purchase that right of way. And then the intention is also to build a, a, stop, a stop there as well. And this is going to increase that connectivity piece. We anticipate that we'll have three station site properties and we've already purchased those. One is um, one we already had, which is near Box Elder High School. The second one is 11th South, right by the Walmart that I was talking about. 
And then the other purchase was just completed, and it is that the 750 North in Willard. Um, for those of you who know where the Flying J is, that's exactly where that is located. And um, in addition to that, we've also had six private corridor properties that have been acquired. And just as a reminder, a UTA uh, approaches willing sellers, and that's how we acquire a uh, right away. Um, we currently have discussions with several other entities that are interested in selling as well, and we will pursue those as we as we can. Um, we're also looking to do uh, UDOT and Union Pacific's corridor um, that should be completed soon. That is still um, in UDOT's hands for uh, their review. We hope that that will be completed soon so that that can all get taken care of. And that's actually in the... Um, is that the one that Willard President City. Adams is pushing pretty heavily? Yes. Okay. Yes. We talked about that this morning in USAC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a very vocal proponent of that from what I understand. It's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime deal to actually be able to acquire rights of way from Union Pacific. Yes. So and There's two that he's pushing. That's one, and then the other one is by Hill Air Force Base, but that's correct. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is we have uh, survey work done on the properties that we do have and how the connectivity is going to work. Um, next slide, please. So this is what we want to have you guys do for us, and we will make sure that we connect with you always. We want to understand what you're looking at when you're looking at economic development and long-range planning. Future land use is, is a critical element. We, we know that in order to maximize the connectivity, we want to know where those developments are, are going to be at. We know that community character is important, and every time I drive up on Main Street, I just, I just love how quaint it is and how I just love the character of it and that's the character that you cannot duplicate just anywhere. Um, we want to know what your vision is for public transit. We recognize that this is a long range game for everyone and we want to make sure that we are connecting with you and, and understanding your needs. And any opportunities that we can do to partner with you to make sure that we are addressing your needs, that's what we would like to do. So with that, um, any questions? That was the, uh, the first time that I had seen all three of those as potential um, stops. <laughs> Willard, I think that makes a ton of sense. I mean, if you've got somebody that says, hey, I want to go up to Willard Bay for the day, great. You know, just top on, you can go right across the street, you're there. Um, going into 1100 South, that makes sense. Do you ever anticipate anything actually happening at the, at the Brigham site? I mean, it's, it's kind of landlocked and there's really I mean, it, it's it's a decent park and ride spot now, but intermodal hub, mm. yeah, not yeah. so much. I mean, is that kind of what you envision in the future? Or I wondered if it get treated like how Pleasant Views ended up. Well, right yeah, that that is a good that's a good point because one of the challenges that we had with Pleasant View is the fact that we did share track with UP, and right. because of their internal uh, scheduling, it was often difficult for us to even right. get a consistent schedule. And when we look at 11 South, I think that that is definitely even further long range than looking at the Walmart site, which I think really does make a lot of sense, that connectivity piece. And ideally, so that's 10 acres over there by the Walmart. And, and that would be a good place to look at some type of intermodal connectivity piece. And I think it does make more sense. Now, at this point, it is still on the radar and, you know, we can certainly have a discussion on that. There's not an intention, I don't think, at this stage. The corridor preservation is going to the, uh, site, the site near Walmart, and that's where it's going at this point. Right. Are you talking to broadband people on your way to to be able to see when you start actually seeing if they can come with you along the way? Because we do need some of that stuff that's from down point. south up here. So. I mean, we just finished the one from Tremont to the Idaho border, but we'd sure like to get the connectivity from, you know, every place else. Yeah. I mean, Brigham City, do you have, do you have fiber? Do you have some Perry? Mm -hmm. So but there's some places down in South Willard and Willard and places like that that actually need the trunk line. That could do that. That'd so that. that would be yeah. a great way to start. So. Yeah, we'd be happy to reach out. Would you make a note of that? Please. Might as well bury as much as you can in that corridor. Yep. Yes. Yes. We'll... We'll definitely make sure okay. that we do that, and we'll update um, you guys when we find out some more information on that. So that's okay. a good question. And I was just going to mention to you on that bus stop change. I think that's been good. I've, I've actually oh. seen, and it works really smooth, and, and it was really thanks to a business owner. 
yep. suggest to so. Yep, Hanson's just said they were tired of sending their people out there to shovel the snow. Yeah. To make to it the work. street, yeah. Because it was ugly. Try and keep you yeah. from getting hit. Yeah. So. Well, and, and I really appreciate that because if we if we can do stuff like that to really make it work better, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. So thank you for that. The only thing I can say yes. it was went to the speed of government. <laughs> I mean, talk about long-range planning. <laughs> to say. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's not your fault. I'm just saying if there's anything we could ever do that creates a safety that was a hazard, I think we should have been able to go down and actually pull up the bus stop, put it over there, pound the stake, and send it out. But it took us a few months. It wasn't quite a NEPA process, but it was approaching it. It, yeah. it. it did take a little while. And to be candid, we make changes only on our change days. But you're right. There's Why is it only on the change days if it's a safety issue? And, and I appreciate your perspective. So, okay. yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, and I do appreciate the, uh, the forethought in, in purchasing that down there. Because after the, uh, the traffic study that did come in for Box Elder Weber and Cash, that was the the prime location. I mean, that was the area that was identified as this is where transportation is going to happen at that intersection with Cash, Northern Box Elder, Southern Box Elder, I-15. And so, um, you know, we're glad that that's there and waiting. So. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming up and okay. sharing that with us. Have you gone Thank to you. the other cities and talked to these guys? Have you done this to Perry and Willard? Also? No, they're on our rotation, so okay. we do intend to do that. Um, okay. I, I'm working north and heading on south, so, yeah, I'll be starting up here probably in the next month And I so. think we start talking about the fast track buses as soon as we can, you know, even though we won't have that from 2027. If we can use something yeah. where they're parking, you know, at, the, at Utah State, we can – hopefully get some fast track buses quicker than we can with everything going on at Hill Air Force Base. Has Thicol, or I mean North with Grumman, reached out to you anymore about doing some buses? Yes. Okay. Um, not buses, but they've actually... Uh, More reached... shuttles and stuff. Correct, okay. yeah. At this stage, with all the construction in the on the, on the freeway right now, it's just there's not anything else really that anyone can do. So we're just trying to, to slowly work with them. You know, they've just broke ground on their fourth building, and so they anticipate... Um, an additional two to 4,000 uh, workers in that area at some point. Well, and that one's that one. I'm talking out to Promontory. Oh, to Promontory. No, they, they haven't reached they out just, to us They just opened that. up Plant 78, so another 20-something buildings are good. Then they're talking about another 2,000 people out that way also. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was talking Thank with you. one of the guys out there, and uh, he said that they're they're hiring like crazy. They, they just they don't have enough people. It's back during the shuttle area again. They're hiring 200 people a week. That's good to out know. of the plant so i would reach out to them and just see something else on those other things if you can't start you know putting your bus schedule towards those and having more people with shuttles and things going out that way too there are a number of people that do take advantage of the uh, the uta um van pools we used see to a lot of yeah. those going out there. we used to have buses i mean when yeah. i was out there you know twice a day three times four times a day we'd come out you know big buses so yeah anyway okay thank you Thanks, you guys. Oh, and I Thank did you. want to hand over one more thing. Cool. Don't be sorry. It's probably Shul's fault. <laughs> wow. I could just. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for coming up, you guys. Good to see you. Yep. Well, Karen, most of you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> okay, I think we're at the Scott Show, right? Scott Lyons, come on down. What's that? Yeah. You want me to do that after he gets done? It doesn't say that. Mm. I think we've got one. We do. Yeah. All right. I think my first item is a letter to the BLM. <coughs> so in coordination with um, what we are calling cooperating counties, so this includes 
Washington County, Iron County, Beaver County, Millard County, Juab County, Twilla County, and Box Elder County. Um, if you recall, last year we, um, we we chose to participate in what is being called as the called the High Desert Trail. Um, so this is a north to south trail um, that runs uh, in the western desert uh, of the state of Utah from basically Washington County to Box Elder County. Um, so this letter that is being um, sent to the uh, BLM from each participating county is basically it's just requesting a categorical exclusion from the uh, NEPA requirements, National Environmental Policy Act requirements. Um, so you can request categorical exclusions for activities which are educational, informational, advisory, or consultative to other agencies, public and private entities, visitors, individuals, or the general public. Um, so this is kind of, the, the High Desert Trail is, uses existing roads and trails um, across private, state, forest service, and BLM, BLM lands along that entire path. So no new trails are being proposed. And so the, the request of these cooperating counties, Box Elder being one of those, is to request that we don't have to go through the NEPA process. It's a long drawn out process. And, and all we're doing is um, proposing the establishment, uh, like an official establishment of a trail along an, an existing corridor and then the, uh, I guess, educational, informational, or advisory aspect of it would be just to place signage along that trail. Um, so that's, that's, that's where the request is coming from. We would submit this to, um, to uh, those who are in charge of the, uh, the NEPA process, and hopefully they would get back to us and issue that categorical exclusion so that we didn't have to go through that process. Let it help it get done in your kids' lifetime. Yes. Yes. I would assume that uh, this is kind of a standard letter and we're just getting signatures from uh, all of the counties. And mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. What chances do you think uh, BLM saying, yeah, you know, that, that makes sense? Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't dealt with this personally before. Um, Millard County's uh, tourism director is kind of the one heading up the process, so... Okay. She, she's, cool. the, she's the one that drafted the, the letter. She drafted it in coordination with someone who has done them before. Um, and so that's uh, kind of kind of where it's coming from, the language in that. And she's just, once all the counties have the opportunity to uh, sign the letter, they'll send them back to her and she'll send them off. It makes sense. I hope it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd entertain a motion to support them. I'll make a motion we sign a letter to support the, the uh, high, high Desert Trail. I'll second that. I've got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item is the 3600 West subdivision. Uh, this is a one lot subdivision. It contains, the, the lot is 11 acres in size. Um, it's located at uh, on 3600 West, and usually they have the address here. Not seeing the address printed on here. Uh, it's just north of, uh, northeast of Fielding. Oh, okay. So, um, that might be the address. <laughs> yeah, I guess once you get up there, that's. Yeah. Be careful, what, you two. What they turn into. <laughs> you haven't been there in 35 years. Don't even go there. <laughs> going there Sunday for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so this subdivision, it's been through the uh, review process by all applicable county staff and, and comes with the recommendation of approval. Is this an agricultural lot? So I mean, why didn't they just do it with an ag lot? They're going to, because ag limits it to agriculture only. So okay. they do have a, the remainder parcel is an agricultural parcel, but they do plan on building on this okay. piece. So right. they have, that's where they have to go this route. You guys got any other questions? I don't. I entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the 3600 West subdivision. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, 
Next item is the Cockrum subdivision. Uh, this one's also a one lot subdivision. It's just south of P&G out on Iowa Springs. So it's located at 4132 North, 6800 West. Uh, it contains six acres. Um, and this one as well has been through the um, review process by uh, all applicable county staff and comes with a recommendation of approval. Any questions on that one? Nope. This is actually the second time I've heard about all of these. <laughs> Entertain a motion. I make a motion we uh, approve the Cochram subdivision. I'll second that. Got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield, second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Ordinance 523. Okay, this one is um, an ordinance of uh, for a rezone. So it's been requested that um, 66.71 acres be rezoned from the MU160 zone to the RR5 zone. This is located at 4550 North, or I should say approximately 4550 North. Um, and east of, of Highway 38. So this is up in the Harper Ward area on the hillside there. Um, this went through the Planning Commission. A public hearing was held there. Um, the Planning Commission reviewed uh, the request. It was tabled and then it went back before the Planning Commission where the, the Planning Commission forwarded a recommendation of approval. Um, and it comes before you um, with that recommendation. I don't know if they're any specific questions on it or if they got everything taken care of yeah i mean that there was stable there were some concerns up there about uh the density because if i remember right there is some hillside and so you could have some you know interesting shaped lots mm -hmm. and uh, they were a little bit concerned about uh, septic tanks and access but, and access, access. but I mean, if, if those items can be mitigated, then it's it's not a technically a reason for denial. Correct. But kind of what it came down to was uh, as far as those items like access, for example, was which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Do, do you prove the access and then get the zoning, or do you get the zoning and then find the access? Um, I think the final decision making uh, was, you know, not knowing which way to go with that. You lean in favor of the landowner. As well, the property to the north, the west, and the south of this property was already zoned RR5. Yep. Oh. Um, and so it kind of put it in line with Makes the sense. adjacent property. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. I'd make a motion that we approve ordinance number 523, zoning map amendment. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Scott and second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ordinance 524 is an agricultural subdivision. Uh, so this is located at 16390 North, 4400 West, um, and this is uh, splitting a single-family dwelling uh, with the parcel surrounding that um, off of ag agricultural land um, to the east of it. So it would, it would separate the home off of the off of the farm essentially. So this has been before the planning commission and um, received approval there and state code essentially if there's a single family home on it state code requires it comes to the legislative body in form of an ordinance and that's okay. why it's here where did you say this is located um 16390 north 4400 west okay i'll make a motion we approve ordinance uh, 524 the rose agricultural subdivision I'll second that. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield, second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you want me to sign them now or? Sure. Okay. Oh, I
sure ain't. So low. Six o'clock. You guys are a half hour behind. You can hear. <laughs> You're doing. You were smoking. Don't say that. Don't say that. Say that. Jenica, you can start coming up if you want. <clears throat> you want to drop off those? What's that? Okay. Get them done. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for the work. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I'll call you tomorrow about bridges. <laughs> Do you have color ID? Yes, he does. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Okay, Jenica. Okay, so I have two agreements here for different employees who have requested their HSA distribution from June to be paid early um, due to financial and medical concerns. I'd entertain a motion. Uh, I would make a motion that we approve those early HSA distributions for the other uh, two employees. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jenica. Next time, make them put you in the front if you don't have to stay. You ready for your RDA? Yeah. Um, can I open up the RDA? As soon as Marta changes the tape. You guys can start coming up, though. Stuart, Mitch. Okay, we're ready. Just, uh, oh, yes, like we do. A beehive mask or something. Sorry. Um, we do have some minutes. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from December 16th, 2020. Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes from December 16th, 2020. I'll second that. I have a motion by Commissioner Hadfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Did we already appoint you? Oh, no, I don't think so. We need to redo the me being the chair. I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint Stan Summers as the chair for the RDA. I don't know how to run that in the uh, Google version, so. Okay, uh, there was a motion made to. Uh, to appoint Stan okay. as the chair for the RDA. Second that. Motion by Commissioner Hatfield, second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Time turned over to Mr. Uack. Yeah. Let's say what your name is and what we're doing. Yeah. For the record, Stuart Clayson with the Utah Association of Counties. Um, I'm, is it okay if I oh, talk yeah, for purposes? All right, good. 
Um, <laughs> I've had it. I think I'm within my third. I think I'm still within my 90 days. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so, um, in for the board to consider is a survey area resolution that has identified multiple areas throughout the county. Um, the intent for this survey area resolution is to begin the st to begin the study process to evaluate um, an area or areas throughout the county that could be um, prime for industrial development, warehouse and distribution, logistics related activity. Um, I think the thought process is twofold with the new administration and um, in the governor's office, as well as a, a renewed focus and dedication to non Wasatch front development. It is very important to build upon the already established success that this county has had um, in working with large scale manufacturing operations and its position um, both in the Intermountain West um, on the interstate and things like that, and also understanding how do we use the airport. So that that focus, along with the um, specific focus with the state creating mm -hmm. a statewide ent entity that is wanting to look at those things, we would like to be prepared um, in Box Elder County, or I think you all as the um, RDA board and the commissioners would like to be prepared to enter into any negotiations with any organization that might like to come forward and and work with you all to further expand the good hard work that both this county and the cities have done i'm happy to Got any questions i've got lots of questions <laughs> now, one of the questions that came up in our uh, government affairs meeting this morning for the other uh, chamber was has it gotten far enough along in the discussions that they have kind of got a conceptual idea of how many spokes there would be because that was one of the questions because obviously I would say pretty much every county wants a piece of mm -hmm. this if they can get it, but they're not going to have 29 spokes. No. And so have they kind of said, okay, I think logistically it makes sense to have four or it makes sense to have six. Can I answer the question now? Thank you. Thank you, commissioner. And I think that's a pretty astute observation and it's good that, you know, in, in your meetings, you're hearing that. Um, obviously everyone, thinks it, it, I liken it to, I don't know if you remember the movie, uh, oh gosh, Highlander. <laughs> um, there can be only one. <laughs> and, and, and I think so. Um, and I actually think it could behoove as, uh, you know, after legislative session, it might benefit, um, any group like getting people together and bringing Inland Port staff here to have a conversation. They've been working, um, very closely with the Bear River Association of Governments. There was a presentation made at the last Inland Port Board meeting um, that Patrick Mullen and myself were, were part of. And what was proposed there at the end of that presentation was to not have specific sites, but based on existing cargo flow and, and business activities, they presented a proposed map to think of the south of the state in into in four regions. Um, and if you think of the map of the state of Utah kind of being like this, you all would be top region, um, kind of Tooele, Salt Lake would be a region, and then a large region kind of running down from Duchesne and Uinta all the way to the southern on that side, and then another one running down kind of from uh, maybe Utah County, lower Utah County, all the way down to the other part. Um, and, and I think the Inland Port staff, and I, I didn't want to like kind of call them out and talk about that. This is more whatever happens there. I think the, the intent here, regardless of them, regardless of what the state does, I think they have got us thinking about, hey, like we have very well-established companies that have chosen this area and we have kind of the development community in the state of Utah is now recognizing the opportunity in Box Elder trying to take large, large swaths of property. 
Um, so let's get our act together. Let's let's study these areas and see if tax incremental financing might be a useful tool it to have in the county and your partner city's toolbox. But let's also have conversations with Salt Lake City to see if we could get foreign trade zone designation and things of that, it, regardless of what the state does and that. But to to dig into your question, I think if you I know if you talk to the staff and it, we'll, we'll have them come and we should have a meeting with anyone who's interested. It's not four sites or one site. I think they're intentionally looking at they're a statewide organization that's been created to understand the existing supply chain operations in the state and cargo flows and identify opportunities throughout the entire state where pub appropriate public investment could be made to accelerate already existing business activities. Um, so it is, and I don't think it's a one time thing. I actually think what's exciting to me as a resident who has gotten a sense and you all are elected officials, I kind of know how, you know, decisions are made at UDOT. Um, and there, or you, we had UTA, UTA here. Those are all great organizations. What I see this as is another vehicle for us to think about and invest in appropriate public infrastructure, hopefully less on the Wasatch Front and more off of the Wasatch Front. So that was a long-winded way to answer your question, but I feel like it was appropriate to look at it from a global perspective because I think there is the... Part of the messaging is it's it's not going to be one side or the other. Mm -hmm. It's a statewide vision. But I think that one of the main criteria that is going to be in the evaluation process, if and when they get real sub, submission, sub, sufficient funding from the state, is what communities are willing partners and what communities are prepared to be those partners. Does that... I, I was... I won't, did I do an adequate job? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. we can't... Can't ask for much more than that to look at. I mean, if if you look at Box Elder County on our merits, um, I'm fine. We we compete with everybody. Yeah. So. But and I don't think I I'd want to reiterate. It's this is not a. I think the the team. This is not a competition. And the leadership. This what I'm very excited about is this is all going to be driven by business decisions, not not kind of political gamemanship. Yep. Which, which really excites me because right. I think we should make decisions based on mar on marketability and, and speed to market. And I also know that there is no desire um, to use this as a vehicle to enrich um, land developers. We're not, I don't think there's any opposition to them making dollars, but this is about, I mean, you guys know how important it is to have companies like Nucor or Northrop Grumman or Procter & Gamble. Like th those, those are kinds of the, those are, that's where the focus needs to be and what goods are coming in and goods are flowing out. Well, and I look at it like the mega site we went through however many years ago when we started citing mega sites in preparation for some of those things happening throughout the state. And I think this is just a, another way of making sure that things are ready to go when things happen. So. And you guys are real, this is all you guys are doing is saying, we, we threw basically, worked with your GIS department, we threw everything on, and we'll go through an uh, iterative process and, and work with Mitch and, 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 and the commissioner um, before we come forward. But this is just kind of saying, let's look at these areas. And we got to, you know, some of them are within, um, you know, boundaries of, of municipalities in the county. But this is an opportunity for it's. I think it's a new way of thinking around economic development. And the other, the la I'll add a piece. The other exciting thing is we're now talking about like thinking regionally, which you guys have always, like since I've been here and watching Box Elder, you guys have all. I mean, you work with Twilla, you work with you know you you guys are a partner, and it's not the crabs in the bucket mentality is not. No one wins on that. It's a zero sum game. Awesome. Any cool, cool. I don't. So this is basically just authorizing, kind of a survey. Let's mm -hmm. let's look at it. Let's check it out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Talk to people and say it's what we're thinking. Get input. And it's the first step toward creating a project. Base. Or not. Well, I mean, then yeah. this resolution is the yeah. first step. Okay. I'd entertain a motion.
Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't add a resolution. We might need. Can we do that at another meeting? <laughs> 2101. I'll own it. I didn't draft the resolution. Okay. I apologize. Come on, just. I I can. I I, I, I I. Do you want me to do it now? <laughs> we can we can pass it. There's some post-it notes right. Yeah, right. There's some post notes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I did. I mean, I did give. I did. I not send that. Yeah. I'm, it's what, what's the document? Doesn't it say resolution on top. Um, I don't have a document. Oh, I, I, I did I send, it. send it. I, I did, it but I'll own it. It's on me. I'm, sure. I'm happy. Maybe didn't get it to me. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did draft one, and I, I yeah, did email. Steve over. I, I sent it to Steve as well. So yeah, okay. there's a resolution. Sorry. Okay. okay. But you can blame it on me. My accent it makes. Might, it might be, it's, it's all your Look, name. it is. It's it, my everyone hears my accent and they think that I've just got I'm a few points below on my IQ, which I, I I'm probably am. Just blame it on COVID. Yeah, I rely on the kindness of other people. <laughs> <laughs> your accent got a lot more pronounced just in the last thirty seconds. Well, you know what? I I mean it it did, did me no good in Louisiana, but I come out here. I it, I. <laughs> I mean, you work with what you got. You play the cards you dealt. Like I, I'm not saying I'm gonna win, but I'm gonna be in the mix. <laughs> I'm gonna be here all week. <laughs> yep. Remember to tip your waitresses. <laughs> oh. I'll still entertain a motion because I think everybody's uh, looked at it. We'll just get it signed. Yeah. Okay. I would make a motion that we approve RDA resolution <laughs> twenty-one dash oh one pending final approval by our county attorney. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks, too. <laughs> okay. It's one of the more entertaining uh, RDA meetings we've had lately. I'd make a motion we uh, go out of our, adjourn from our RDA. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield. <laughs> second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we're going to go back into our regularly scheduled business meeting, and I think we're going to go into a closed session to talk about. Okay. Yeah, litigation for sure. Thanks, Stuart. Safe travels. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. Yeah, we do have a motion to.